In the summer of 1916, a terrible disease struck the children in Brooklyn, New York. Thousands had stiff necks, fevers, and legs that wouldn't work. Doctors did not know what the disease was. Finally, they realized it was infantile paralysis or poliomyelitis, better known as polio. There was no cure. Between June and November, 27,000 people across the nation got polio. 7,000 of them died. Polio came back every summer and thousands became sick. Usually the disease paralyzed the legs, but sometimes the chest muscles were also paralyzed and victims died because they could not breathe. Polio patients were quarantined in hospitals. There was no cure. And even as old as I am, I remember, I remember the pain, how bad it hurt. Mom said that when I walked, my left leg didn't work. And so I'd walk and my left leg would just kind of flop. But doctors did what they could with casts, braces, and surgery. In 1928, Philip Drinker invented a breathing machine called the Iron Lung, which saved many lives. It was meant to be temporary, but some remained in them for decades. Meanwhile, scientists studied polio to find a way to stop it. In 1908, Carl Landsteiner and Erwin Popper discovered that polio was caused by a virus, which meant a vaccine could prevent it. Unfortunately, scientists thought the virus would only grow in nerve tissue, which would make producing the vaccine hard. Polio victim President Franklin Roosevelt created the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, which provided money for research, training, and treatment of polio. The foundation became the March of Dimes and collected money needed to find a vaccine. Jonas Salk left a promising career as a doctor to become a virologist. While working on a flu vaccine for the army, he began to consider a killed virus vaccine for polio. Most people had thought that a person had to be infected with live virus in order to become immune. But the March of Diamonds funded Salk's search for a killed virus vaccine. A major step toward finding it came when Dr. John Anders, Thomas Weller, and Frederick Robbins discovered that poliomyelitis could be grown in other tissues. They were the first to grow polio virus outside the living body, and their discovery meant that mass production of a vaccine was possible. They were given the Nobel Prize. Salk spent three years typing poliovirus. He found out there were three polioviruses, and the vaccine would need to include all of them. By 1951, he had made his vaccine for viruses killed by formalin, which destroyed the virus's ability to reproduce, but triggered the making of antibodies. The vaccine contains what's called an antigen, and that is a piece of chemical material that goes into your immune system, and your immune system makes something called an antibody, and that antibody fights the virus. Salk tested his vaccine on polio survivors and saw that their antibodies had increased. He then inoculated himself and his family. The vaccine was a success, but field trials still had to be done. That summer, almost 60,000 people got polio. In 1954, the March of Dimes bought 27 million doses of the vaccine. The two million children who were given the vaccine, or the placebo, were called polio pioneers. On April 12, 1955, the 10th anniversary of Roosevelt's death, it was announced that Jonas Salk's vaccine worked. People literally lined up to receive the vaccine. Children would no longer have to fear iron lungs, bracers, and crutches. It had freed them not only from the disease, but as Roosevelt said, from fear itself. Another doctor, Albert Sabin, created a weakened virus vaccine that could be given orally. Albert Sabin's vaccine became the most used vaccine in the U.S. Today, children in the U.S. are injected with the Salk's killed virus vaccine because there is less chance of getting the disease. The last case of wild polio in the U.S. was 1979, but there are still people who suffer the consequences of polio. I only have 47% of the muscles in my left leg left and I have about 53% in my right leg. Some are in wheelchairs. Around 30 are still dependent on iron lungs. In 1988, 1,000 children around the world got polio every day. That same year, the World Health Organization passed a resolution to eradicate polio as they had smallpox. Thousands of volunteers go from house to house, even in dangerous places, to give just two drops of oral polio vaccine to every child five and under. Some volunteers have been killed, but progress is being made. By 2002, fewer than 2,000 cases of polio occurred in the entire year, and less than 30 this year. The discovery of Jonas Salk's vaccine is not the only thing that helped win freedom from polio. It has been the efforts of many, including the fundraising of FDR and the March of Dimes, the work of scientists like Enders, Weller, Robbins, and Albert Sabin, and the sacrifice of thousands of volunteers. The impact of their efforts is felt worldwide and has changed billions of lives.